there are going to be all kinds of mistakes in our life. Things that we do that we should not have done. Things that we say that we should not have said. Things that we earned that we should not have earned. Wrong that we did to ourselves, wrong we did to somebody else, wrong we did before Allah Azza wa Jal. There are things we should have done and we refuse to do them or we fail to do them. There are things we should not have done and we did them anyway. That, that's, and you know best your own story. That's not for anyone else to know. Allah Azza wa Jal knows and the angels that are recording know. But you know what? Every time you and I make a mistake, we have an option. Iblis comes to you and me and says, listen, I know you made a mistake, but come on, you were under a lot of pressure. It's understandable. It's logical. I mean, what choice did you have? It's okay. Allah understands. Don't worry about it. Don't feel so bad about it. Human beings are very good at making excuses. And where do the excuses come from? Iblis. Because there's one thing Iblis does not want. He does not want you to say with your heart, Astaghfirullah. Because when Adam السلام, was sent to the earth, Allah told him, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ Now that I'm sending you to the earth, you will need guidance. You will need guidance. And whoever follows my guidance, they won't have to worry, they won't have fear, they won't have sadness. The first guidance Allah sent to this earth, Allah says, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Allah gave Adam السلام, words by means of which he turned back to Allah asking for his forgiveness. Asking for Allah's forgiveness was the first guidance given to humanity. That was guidance number one. Before any other teaching, before anything Allah taught us about halal and haram, before anything Allah taught us about remembering Allah in different ways, before anything Allah taught us about the gratitude of Allah and the perfection of Allah, the first thing Allah taught humanity was seek Allah's forgiveness. And you know what? That's how the story of humanity started, by seeking Allah's forgiveness. Where does the story of humanity end? On Judgment Day, isn't it? And on Judgment Day, believers are trying to make their way towards Jannah. And they haven't made it to Jannah yet. They haven't made it yet. Some people had a lot of faith, so they have a lot of light coming out of their chest and their right hand. And some people have a little bit of faith, so they have a little bit of light coming out of their chest and their right hand. And if you have a lot of light, you know where to go. If you have a little bit of light, you can only take one step at a time. And people are inching towards Jannah, trying to make it to Jannah. And what do they say? This is the last dua human beings will ever make. Master, please complete our light. Let this light, this battery not run out until we make it to the gates of Jannah. And forgive us. Forgive us. The first guidance, the first dua was what? Forgiveness. And the last dua for all humanity is what? Forgive us. The guidance of Allah begins and ends with seeking forgiveness. And seeking, this astaghfirullah is not something small. There's not, it's not a small reason that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked istighfar of Allah a hundred times. Why is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking for Allah's forgiveness? We know that prophets are free of sin. And on top of that, Allah describes him, as I told you before, as a brilliant son, flawless. Allah Azza wa Jal will give us the reasons for which istighfar isn't just about doing a sin. Istighfar is about not doing enough. Istighfar is also about not doing enough. No human being should ever feel about themselves that they have done enough for Allah. They have always fallen short for what Allah gave them, they can never give back. And so they ask Allah's forgiveness for their own shortcomings. You know, Ibrahim alayhi salam built the Kaaba. After all those tests, and when he was building the Kaaba, he said, وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا Please accept our tawbah. Please forgive us. Why is he asking for forgiveness? Because as I'm putting one brick of the Kaaba on top of the other, I pray that this is good enough. I pray my salah is good enough. I pray my dua is good enough. Because my dua may not be perfect. My salah may not be perfect. My qira of Qur'an may not be perfect. Even when we do good deeds, those good deeds, are they perfect? No. And so when, because they're not perfect, what will complete, the, there's a gap. And that gap can only be filled by what words? Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Our ibadah will always be incomplete without istighfar to Allah Azza wa Jal. We finish the salah, what's the masnoon dhikr to do? We finish the salah, the first thing we do is what? Astaghfirullah. You know, when some people become impressed, 
I, I remind myself of this, I remind you of all, of all of you of this. When some people become impressed with their own good deeds, when, then they are following the footsteps of shaitan. And it doesn't matter if those are prayers, and it doesn't matter if that's hajj, and it doesn't matter if it's anything else. If you yourself are impressed with the good that you have done, you're impressed with how patient you are, you're impressed with how kind you are, you're impressed with how much you pray, you are impressed with how much you recite. When you become impressed with yourself, the door of istighfar is closed. Even if you say astaghfirullah, you don't mean it. Because you think it's perfect, you're perfect already. So those are just words, they don't mean anything. The istighfar means nothing if it's not coming from the heart. If you don't acknowledge, and I don't acknowledge that we are flawed, that what we do is not good enough. You know, one time Ali radiallahu anhu was passing by someone who was saying, Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. And he said, your istighfar needs istighfar. <laughs> you know. So the last thing I share with you about istighfar, not only does it cover our flaws, not only does it teach us humility, and it teaches us, you know, profoundly it teaches us that we aren't perfect and we will always be making mistakes and we have to admit our mistakes to Allah. By the way, on that note, it's not easy to admit your mistake to another person. Somebody says to you, hey, I didn't like what you said. What? What did I say? Huh? I, it was perfectly right what I said. What are you talking about? You didn't understand what I said. There's a problem with you, not with me. When somebody points out your mistake, you get defensive. I didn't make a mistake. Guess who got defensive when his mistake was pointed out? Iblis. And when you become defensive, there's no way you'll ask Allah's forgiveness. Yes, it's hard to admit our mistakes in front of people. But if you become, if you get in the habit of defending yourself every time, it will be hard for you and hard for me to admit ourselves before Allah. It'll be hard for us to say, Ya Allah, I messed up, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. And I'm seeking genuinely your forgiveness. So being able to admit your mistake is actually a step towards istighfar. Shaitan doesn't even want us to admit it. When somebody asks for forgiveness, if I came to somebody and said, I'm sorry I said that, I made a mistake, and I, you know, somebody admits their crime before a judge, somebody admits their, you know, some of the politicians make a mistake and they have to do a press release, I'm really sorry I said that and I didn't mean to say it and please still will vote for me and, you know. Is that, is that dignifying or is that embarrassing when they have to admit their mistake? It's embarrassing. If somebody has to admit their mistake, it's very embarrassing. And Allah Azza wa Jal on the tongue of Nuh alayhi salam told us, when you seek forgiveness of Allah, you are hoping for Allah not to humiliate you, but to what? To honor you. That actually our honor lies in admitting our faults before Allah and asking, begging Allah to cover them. That's actually our honor. When we admit ourselves to any other human being, it will be humiliation. When we humiliate ourselves before Allah, that is the only honor a human being will ever have in this life. This is the power of just the words, Astaghfirullah. When we say these words, we are transforming our lives. We're opening the doors to rizq. We're dignifying ourselves. We are reminding ourselves of the journey of Adam alayhi salam and the journey we will all be taking as we walk into the gates of Jannah.